Welcome back to Dyson Sphere Program. My name is Nilaus, and this is an update on the latest patch, patch 0 0.927. Oh, that sounds boring, but let's call it the attack of the fidget spinners. Then it makes much more, uh, it makes it a much more interesting one. So you will see here, this is a new world that I have just started. It is a Twitch exclusive thing. So I am not going to make a let's play of this series here on YouTube. It is basically a celebration of the end of September on uh, Twitch that will be streaming this uh, all the time for the rest of the of September, like a big old marathon. So come on over to Twitch TV slash Nilaus, uh, starting at 8 p.m. Central European time any day uh, for the rest of September. If you're watching it later, too bad you missed it. Um, there will be votes on my VOD channel if you want to catch up with what I done, what I did here. So we are going to go in here and uh, take a look at the things. So there are a number of things in this patch, but by far the most important and interesting one is the logistics distributors and logistics bots. So those are the ones that we're going to be looking at today. Uh, this is the research. It comes in quite handily at blue and red signs. It comes in before the planetary system, so it is basically a stepping stone. And I think it also means that you don't have to rush as much to the planetary logistics because anything you want to do in the beginning with planetary logistics, you can almost kind of do it here. Plus, it also has like really uh, advanced, really nice functionality even in the late game because you can do uh, the direct direct delivery to Icarus. So I'll be walking through how it works. Um, then uh, we'll take a look at the two things, the distributor or the hat as I have come to call it. Um, and it just takes iron, it takes these photon, plasma exciters, and it takes some processors. So none of these things are things you can't do on the first planet. I would just say uh, this is going to require more processors. So get a processor build up on your first planet and just uh, make silicon with stone uh, as a set that up and get that done on the first planet. And then we also need the fidget spinners, the logistics spots here. They have a carrying capacity of three and they fly at six meters per second. So carrying capacity of three is not a lot, but it's uh, it's for small quantities over not so long distances. And again, here they need processors and they need the accursed green turbines. So electromagnetic turbines. So those that is yet another thing that needs electromagnetic turbines. So that's something we have to deal with as well. Now, the way it works is that we set, we have a location. Uh, let's get this one out of the way. And, oops, sorry. And we have under here transportation. We have the distributor or the hat. You can put it on. And then it comes in here. And then it automatically, if there's only one item in the box that it's attached to, then it will automatically set a filter here. And then we can put in up to 10 drones. Here is a little, if you are playing it immediately before they patch it, if the drones are flying and you delete it, you lose the drones. If the drones are here, while you delete it, you keep the drones. It's a little thing, but it doesn't really matter. But now it's said. So here are the parameters for setup. This is first that collect, having it deliver and bring, um, yeah, uh, deliver and collect at Icarus or deliver it and collect at other distributors. This is amazing. I did not expect that they would also have one that also works between distributors because that kind of sort of encroaches into the planetary logistics side of things. So that is, uh, that. but that's, uh, we're going to be looking at those three functions, uh, providing, requesting, and then the inter interdistributor uh, network. So there's a setup over here, and there is now a new column over here. This will have, a, this is very interesting. So there's going to be one column for items. This is very similar to Factorio, if you're familiar with that. I will set up my items here, and we'll just show you how it works. And uh, then, if I just make sure we have that here. Um, if we look at this, then it also means that when I get another line in inventory from an inventory upgrade, I actually get another here, but there's also upgrades to get another column entirely. So it's uh, it can scale in, in two different directions. A pretty cool idea. And uh, you won't be able to have every single item here as far as I can tell, but you'll have a number of items. You'll have the in the beginning, you'll just have the primary ones. So what am I gonna do? Well, I would say you can just leave it as provide and requests, but in order to just be clear on what, what we're doing, I'm gonna say, I'm going to provide it from this distributor to Icarus, so switch it over to the blue. You can set the max charging power, all of that should be familiar. We have those 10, and if I didn't step over here, then if I go into my inventory, and then I say, I want to get some of these. Then right now, it's the white area is the stuff that nothing goes on. I can drag it from, let's drag it from this side here. We can drag it to how much is the maximum, and that means if it can then get 
be picked up, then it will pick up. So you basically say, I will at maximum have 2,000 of this, uh, 3,000. If I have more than that, then just throw it away. Then it can be picked up. Or we can go, and this is the more likely one. I am going to set it here. This is, that's 1,200. That's a good number. Let's uh, set 1,200. And as soon as we go, then we have the fidget spinners are coming to attack me. And they're going to be flanked back and forth. Now, here is the thing that kind of threw me off in the beginning. They are not in your inventory. If you look at this, uh, they are going to stay up here. The first ones I brought in are actually going to be here. If we look at this location, you can see that it's said, saying that I have 732 plus 30 inbound and out of the 1200 that I have. And that keeps going back and forth. You can also see that the transfer rate isn't really that great. Uh, they are they're pretty slow, but you know, um, it's good for just topping up on your belts, for example, your inserters. So let's also do the same thing for our inserters. Let's do this part. And how many do we want? Uh, 600 maybe? That's kind of still a lot. If we take 400, that means I can actually get these stacks here. Um, let's, oh, I did not get at least 400. Yes. Do we not have any providers here? You are providing to Icarus. Why? Oh, I know, I know, I know. It's because I already have have that, right? Um, if I just click here and hover over it, I have 600 out of 400. Okay, so that, that was, I was just fearing that I had made a mistake. So here we go. Now they're coming in, bringing in more here. What you will see is that, as I mentioned, you can see here that the first 600, that is two stacks go in here. And now the next ones that come in, the next, the last 18, and then we're topped up, they will go out here. So if you only request two stacks, they actually stick out here. So you actually get extra inventory space and you can use that as uh, you wish. It, it's a bit, I don't know, it just takes a bit of getting used to, but, uh, but it's kind of nice. You get extra inventory space for stuff and it kind of sort of implies that if you have, if you want two stacks of something, then you get it for free in the logistics inventory. So that is the delivery, uh, the inventory part. Now, what I've done here is um, I've actually set up so that the Mark 1 belts can be picked up from this location here. And if they put Mark 1 belts in here, they will be uh, they will be put in and be become new and better belts. So that is a uh, that could be an, a thing. So I could, for example, say here, if you want to grab from Icarus, then we now go over to this side. We have 10 here, and I have to tell it what I am requesting. So I just say conveyor belts, and that means it'll just get all everything that uh, everything that it uh, it can from here. And then it will. I will go here. Then I will say how many do I want? I want none of these because I don't want any of these anymore. And you can see they are now coming in and picking up everything that uh, all of these belts or all of these uh, excess belts that we don't want. And they will now come in and pick up the last of it. And that's also a really nice way to get rid of, for example, I also have some bad sorters as well. You can get those out of the way. So that's uh, pretty neat. Though it's not really what I wanted to do with this one. Um, so that's a good one. Uh, then we can also do another thing. Let's see if I can get that right. Uh, this has been a bit a tricky thing. So uh, if, if you have a box of shame, and I always have a box of shame, then if I say, collecting go here collect and then collect all types then it will try to collect all types that one so that is charging and then that means if i have anything here that i set to collection or to, to pick up then it will pick up for example if i'm saying like oh why am i having graphite here i or graphene why why do i have graphene just get to get rid of all my graphene Right. Uh, I also don't want coal, um, so just get rid of all my coal. And also, what else did I have at junk here? Now, of course, this doesn't really work in a sense that you can put everything up here because you don't have enough of this. But it actually, well, maybe when we have a bigger inventory and more lines, there will be some things you always sort of end up having then that you want to get into sort of a common trash, trash thing. That is uh, definitely an, an option. So you can do a trash thing, and then from here you can... You can do some filtering with belts and stuff like that and, and redistributing it. So that is now all of it with regards to import or 
deliver to Icarus and pick up from Icarus. Then the last one we want is actually sort of a. Uh, let's let's show it in a in a more sort of probable case here. We're going to start by taking this out now. In this case, this is not working because we want electromagnetic turbines, and we have electromagnetic turbines. It, it just happens to be over here. It just happens to be. So I can set this up to say I want to request electromagnetic turbines, or I, I want to deal with electromagnetic turbines. I want to request it from other providers. There are ten in here. So now it'll be looking at the range. We'll talk about range afterwards, and seeing if there's anything around. If I now go over to this little stockpile of turbines, and then put a little hat on, give it some fidget spinners. Uh, there we go. That's some fidget spinners, and then I will be providing it to the uh, other location and then I have to figure out so let's provide to other distributors yes and this one is request from other distributors now we can see that they both the sending and the receiving are now going back and forth and even though each patch here or each batch for back and forth is 30 this is pretty okay for something such as this where you just want to bring some logistics in here or if you want some plasma exciters for some build somewhere where it's not high quantity it's not great for bringing in like hundreds of iron or something like that but it's great for just a few items that you need to uh, to for example you can also just redesign the whole thing here all of this to be based exclusively on logistics and then basically have have sort of the way we do in factorio that you have a requester and a provider and you just request things into the machine and then provide it out into the network again and then basically have the drones do all the work in terms of it. I don't know if that's really something we want to do but it's definitely something I'm going to be experimenting with and uh, in in the future and uh, so keep an eye out for cool designs of uh, new hubs for example that seems like it's it would be a really cool way to do some hub design for this kind of thing. Um, so as you can see it uh, transfers back and forth it's by no means a fast way and and that's basically the third option. Now you might ask, well, how far can they actually reach? It, yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> so here it is, uh, out here in upgrades. We're going to be talking about the upgrades that affect this. And the first thing is range. And there is a new location out here, a new research here that says plus 20 degree distribution range. And that might be really weird to have a distribution, have, um, have this as a degree but of course since it's a sphere then if we look at it at uh, some spherical perspective let's say we have something at the top and it starts out at 40 degrees which means from here if i place one at the top then all the way down to the equator would be 90 degrees and that means it starts out as 40 degrees that means if i have it up top then it can cup uh, i'm just approximately like this top here and then with the first upgrade i have it goes down to 60 degrees that means it now can cover like this area here and then with more upgrades, you can eventually get it to 180 degrees so that one can fit the whole, can service the whole planet. That's uh, that's a lot. Um, that means just as soon as you land on a planet, then it'll start uh, feeding in here. And there are six upgrades as well. This last one is plus 40 upgrade. Uh, that kind of makes sense. 30 upgrade, 30, 20, and yeah. So that will get us all the way to 180 degrees. So we get all that. Now, there are other things that affects it's uh, actually interesting to see if these are actually affected yes here we go uh, to logistics bot also gets uh, additional speed once we get a bit further up uh, logistic speed logistic speed logistic speed and logistic speed here the infinite one is logistic speed 20 so that's uh, pretty cool as well but there is another one that also has an impact here and that is up by the inventory so the inventory is just one line of inventory. As we remember, one line of inventory also gives us one extra slot for each column we have. Uh, here is again, a next one, this one is logistic stack multiplier. Um, that is here, one column of logistics capacity. So once we have this one, then our inventory will, instead of having one column, then have two columns. And I don't know how many columns we can actually get. I don't think that I've seen more than this. Uh, that's that column and I don't think there are any more no and it doesn't go infinite so you can only have two columns times how many lines you have in your inventory so I think that we can get maybe like 10 so 20 items we can request uh, that's still pretty still pretty good and uh, I think that's uh, 
that'll probably be uh, be sufficient for just topping up all the things we have so that when you land on a planet you will automatically get topped up on interstellar logistics and uh, belts and inserters and you know all the things that you forget and then you fly to another planet and then you suddenly forgotten to uh, to bring splitters and then you sort of had to figure out how to handcraft on a foreign planet some splitters that kind of thing like no more because uh, when we go to our home planets, we will just be topping up. So super interesting, and it also gives uh, rise to some changes to my uh, to my polar hubs as well uh, for all the planets. Maybe I don't need that as much there uh, again. I'm not really sure. I, I have to think about it a bit more and just do some testing. So definitely there will be more designs coming for Dyson Sphere program in the future, but I'm not going to have a full let's play of, of this. The last thing I want to show uh, for this patch is a small but not insignificant change if we built this planetary logistics station it now has four which is absolutely amazing because four means that it's three ingredients and the final product into one and if we just look at things such as the uh, <laughs> this here uh, there are a lot of things that require three inputs and i just can't find any well they do because this one actually has two inputs right so a lot of things have three inputs, and that just makes it a lot easier to craft those kind of things. For, ex for example, that one can't be crafted. Uh, and these are even worse. But I'm sure that there are some things that have three items. It's, it's one of those things that has been bothering me that it was always like when it was only three, then you couldn't really get the output as well. And you just ended up having way too many planetary logistics, and therefore I always skipped it and went straight for the interplanetary logistics. But in this case, now that it has four, and uh, then it will have a certain niche and I'm gonna try to figure out a way to incorporate it uh, into my builds. So that's uh, pretty damn pretty damn nice. Uh, I, I hope that this was a useful thing and an interesting thing for uh, for you to take a look at in, uh, in connection with this uh, new patch. And uh, just as I last mentioned, if you want to see more, then uh, I am streaming over on Twitch. So uh, come on over to Twitch and then uh, we can have fun with the, with the series over there. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, take care, and as always, stay effective.